Morning, lovely viewer. Well, it's that time of year. And in this video, we're gonna do the best performing rows in my garden of 2022. I've done this video last year. And as I said last year, it's always difficult to, um, to get the timing right of this video. It needs to be late enough in the year that I know which one has performed the best for me in my garden and at the same time I don't want it too late so that you don't get to see any of the the roses so it's always difficult but this year I'm going to start off by saying that um, I have got an outright winner there is a clear second place as well and there is a, a third place but for me for this year I have I've got about six or seven roses all battling it out for fourth spot in my garden that competition for fourth spot is is very very tight indeed but one of those roses battling it out for fourth spot is rose sweet honey this is a cordes rose i planted it only last year and you can see the size of it here it has grown huge it hasn't i, I thought for a while that this rose it, it might win but I'm gonna try and put some previous uh, video footage or at least photographs in here and do an overlay of the commentary. That's what. That's how I'm hoping to do the format of, of this um, video. But Sweet Honey, it comes in at joint fourth place. It's only given me the two flushes, but for those of you who saw earlier footage, that first flush that it gave me, and even this second flush, it has been breathtaking many many flowers it really is a, a heavy flower there's no fragrance from this rose but it really has done extremely well upright growth but it's only given me the two flushes and um, for that reason it only makes it to to joint fourth spot which is surprising because this has grown fantastically well i buried it in a um a snug fitting hole in the garden this year and it has just exploded with growth. Very, very happy with it. And this here is Summer Romance, part of the Parfuma collection. And we, we've got a flower here. And this is also, it's another rose that is in that joint fourth position. A fantastic rose. It's fragrant, it does everything. The flowers, even now in this wet weather, it's letting off a, a, a nice fragrance it does everything very healthy i've i've had this rose um for coming up for a year now so it's its first full summer and it has just given me flush after flush pretty much i would say it was a a rose that has given me plenty of flowers it's got fragrance it's healthy upright growth its flowers they seem to do reasonably well in the rain as well and I ended up buying, I think I've got three or four of these, these roses now, Summer Romance, very happy with it, but it only makes it to, to joint fourth position. Now, what I will say about Summer Romance is this rose here, this is another one. And um, I did plant it initially where it had no morning sun and it didn't seem to do as well. And I've moved it more recently to, uh, to this position here where it gets more sun and, um, it has responded to that. So I do think Summer Romance could be a, a rose that that does like that morning, all morning sun. But you can see it's um it's flowers there. And we are, we are at what, the middle of September now. What's the date today? 13th. But you can see the flowers there. I am hoping that I can overlay some video, keep the commentary going and overlay some video so you get to see more of the flowers. But just so you know, the sun it starts at the front it rises at the front of the house and it comes over so these roses here at the back of the garden they do get a lot of a lot of sun probably from about 6 a.m in june all the way around until sunset rose utterson there that's that's done okay but i am going to talk to you about this rose here because even though it is a new rose i'm not going to judge it because it is so new but um this is pompanella and these flowers here have probably got to be the, the longest lasting that I have in my garden, maybe along with Rose Amadeus. And I wasn't expecting that, but it's just started. The last 
month, it's just started to, to send up new growth. And you see the buds coming through and it looks like it wants to climb, but it's just started to shift in this last month. And these flowers that I'm seeing here, this is probably its, um, this is probably its third flush that I'm seeing. But the roses, they are, they are definitely lasting. So I'm happy with, with that brother Cadfall. Now this is another rose. I do apologize about the weather. I've been trying to, to make this, this video for a little while, but out of the blue, the rain has come down and the wind, I've been un unable to make it. But this is brother Cadfall and this is a rose. When you talk about your best performing rose, I can't put brother Cadfall amongst these but it is a rose that has um it's grabbed me you know some roses that we have in our gardens that you like them for no particular reason you're attracted to them for no particular reason well this is one of those roses i love it a lovely strong fragrance only planted last year but in terms of best performance i can't put it in that that joint fourth position because it was quite late in the year to flower. And it's another rose. This is its, its second flush that you're seeing here. I have deadheaded a couple, but not many, but a, a, lovely, a lovely rose, lovely fragrance, upright growth. It's another rose. Its flowers have been lasting well for me for a, for a David Austin rose. But yeah, Brother Cadful, I am very, very happy with you, brother. Indeed, but there's the, there's the flowers there. But we have got, we have had a lot of rain these last few days. St. Ethelberger, that was a new addition this year. That's too early to judge, but I'm very happy with it. Very floracious and it's growing very well. Now this rose here is Earth Angel. And I planted it probably October last year. And I'm gonna say that, that it, it hasn't done as well as I was as I was hoping. Um, it's only given me one very good flush, and its second flush, um, it only gave me two or three two or three flowers. That is that is the extent of what we have seen from Earth Angel, and I was expecting a little bit more. But it is a young rose. It's only well, not quite a year old. So maybe in future that will do better. But in terms of its flowering ability, it gave me a lovely flush at one point. And I'll try and show you some photographs or video footage here and overlay in this in this video. And I know a lot of people have Earth Angel. So maybe in two years time or a year's time, it will start to do to do better. But I can't include Earth Angel at this moment in time along with my best performing roses now this one here is fruity parfumer now i don't know what the american name would be for for this rose but this is a rose the last couple of months it really has started to stretch its legs the parfumer collection many of them were were late in flowering and this one is no exception but now it has really started to, to do well. And it's got this lovely, this lovely fruity fragrance, healthy. And now it is, it is starting to, it's starting to stretch its legs. It really is. And it's a rose that I'm, um, it's one of the roses that have started to grab me. Like I mentioned earlier, it's, um, it's one of my favorites, I think. This one's just starting to go over. But for a late starter, if you like, it's now doing well. But I can't class it as one of my best performers this year as yet. Now this here is Gertrude Jekyll. And this here, this is its, I do apologize about the wind. This is its third full summer. And this year it has done fantastically well. It really has. And um, I'm gonna put it in that joint fourth spot. It's given me three fantastic flushes. The lovely fragrance of Gertrude. You know, you can't talk about Gertrude without talking about its fragrance. And this year it's been, 
it's been very healthy. In previous years, the problem I had with Gertrude was it, um, it wasn't the most healthy and its growth was a little spindly, a little sluggish. But this year, it really has done fantastically well. Lots of flowers, lots of fragrance, and it's, and it's healthy. And for those reasons, it, it makes it into that, that joint fourth position. Um, James Galway, that's done, that's done well. Very happy with James Galway. Paul Similan Musk, once only flower. That's done fantastic. Lovely, a lovely fragrance from Paul Similan Musk, but it is only a, a once flower. Right, in fact, now I'm gonna to talk to you about this rose here, Snow Princess. I'm pretty confident I'm gonna swap this rose out this year because it hasn't done that well for me. It's only flowered once and there is no sign of, of anything else coming from it at all. And it's meant to be a repeat flower. And um, I'm pretty confident I will swap this out maybe next summer. It is in a baseless pot here. Um, in fact, let's talk to you about the other rose that I might be swapping out. And it is, believe it or not, Arthur Bell, this one here which is such a shame because it, it done such a fantastic job in sort of June. But I said the same thing last year in terms of Arthur Bell. These laterals, there's been no movement for them. It's given me one flush and, and, that, was, and that was it. So um, that was a, a bit of a disappointment. This is Fragrant Cloud and this is enjoying a flush at the moment. I mean, people, they know Fragrant Cloud for its, its strong it's strong fragrance, that's done fantastic. Look at it, it really is enjoying a flush at the moment. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna to talk to you quickly about this rose here because this is a new addition. But this is, it's one of those roses, it's one of my favorites. It's grabbed me and it is Rosemary Harkness. Perhaps some people like their red roses or their pink roses, their white roses. But this rose here, Rosemary Harkness, it is absolutely fantastic. It has proper drawn me. It's, it's sucked me in this rose, but it's it's only a new rose, and I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge it this year because I bought it this summer. But it's a hybrid tea rose, and um, it's already given me two flushes since I've had it, and each flush has been has been very good. So next year, Rosemary Hartness is a rose that I'm going to be looking out for. This one here is another Cordes Rose from the Parfumer collection. Dark Desire or Royal Parfumer. Look at that. I'm going to have to have a smell of this. This one's done fantastically well. I'm not going to include it in the, the top four. Not quite, but it is. It is pushing out a lovely flush now. That's for, that's for sure. Lovely. Um, what else have we got here? Absolutely fabulous, AKA Julia Child. That's another new addition, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge that this year, but maybe, maybe next year. Um, but let's go over to the front here. This here is Kiss Me Kate, another new addition. It hasn't flowered for me as as yet. Um, we've got another fruity perfumer here. And um, we've got this rose here, Jasmina. And this is probably one of the more scented roses that I, that I have. It's a climbing rose, it's new. But that's done, that's done well. This here, it's not in flower at the moment, is First Crush. And along with Earth Angel, I have another Earth Angel just here. And for me, it's, it's, not, it's not done it for me as yet. It's not done it for me as as yet. I was expecting a lot from Earth Angel and First Crush, but maybe it needs another another year or two for for those roses to to start singing. Now this here, Rose Amadeus. This was last year's second place rose in terms of best performance. This year it doesn't make the top ten. I have to say, it hasn't grown. 
as much as I was expecting, it gave me a fantastic first flush, but then its second flush was, I would say, very muted. And that's all we've, that's all we've had from Amadeus this, this year so far. Last year, Queen of Sweden and Amadeus, I think last year it was much windier, much, wind, uh, much wetter conditions. And with those roses' ability, particularly Amadeus, Amadeus's ability to to shine in the wet weather um, amplifies its performance. I think this year it's been very dry, and you know that has given the opportunity for some some other roses to to shine. This here is Emily Bronte, and um, this is another new rose bought only this summer. I have to tell you that this has done fantastically well. It's too early to judge it yet. But it's a, I've said before, it's a, it's a rose that is always fragrant. Whenever I put my nose to Emily, I always get that, that lovely fragrance. And that is something you, you don't often see from, from roses, is my, is my experience. Right, I'm going to talk to you now about the Timeless Collection. Very happy with these roses, particularly Timeless um, Charisma and Timeless Purple. These ones are just starting to, to go over, in fact. But these have these roses, the, they last a long time. I'm getting two weeks, two weeks out of these flowers, and they really are doing fantastically well. Very, they seem to just be pumping out the, the roses. Very floracious, very floracious indeed. And um, I mean, look at this. You know, we're September the 13th, and. It's still pushing out, still pushing out buds, just repeating, pushing out the, the buds. Right, Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth, this is David Austin's new rose for 2022. And it's, it's worth me talking about this, I think, for a little while. I thought this rose was going to win. When it first started to flower, it was just pumping out the flushes, just pumping out the roses, growing very well, growing very strong. But perhaps this is self-inflicted because I moved it, you can see it's potted. It was just there on the driveway and it was doing fantastically well. Just pumping out the flushes of, of flowers, always, always in flower. But I moved it here to a more shadier position. And here, this tree, it does offer it a good couple, two or three hours of shade in the morning. And I've noticed that since I've moved it, the handbrake, it has come on and this has, this has really stopped stopped growing. Now, David Austin, they do say that this rose is, it can put up with the shade, um, but I've got two of these and another one I moved to the back garden and the same thing happened at the same time. They both just stopped. They seized in terms of, um, in terms of flowering. Now, Rose Elizabeth it is also a rose. I've said before, it's, it's fragrance. It can be very moody. You'll put your nose to, to Rose Elizabeth and um, often you won't get anything at all. I think there are many roses like that, but um, Rose Elizabeth, I've seen, she can be, she can be moody. Like, to be honest, like First Crush, like Earth Angel as well. But here's Timeless, um, this is Timeless Pink and she's letting off a nice, a nice fragrance today. But, um let's go out the out the oh in fact there's one more rose that i want to talk to you about and then we'll start looking at the the top three and that is rose boscobel i've just literally commented on on someone i'm hoping i can overlay some some footage in here but boscobel for me this year has flowered particularly well i've had three flush, flushes from her and you can see there's new buds coming through for the next fourth flush. So for me this year, Boscobel has been, has done really, really very well. That lovely fragrance, it's a previous winner of um, Rose of the, you know, best performing rose in my garden. It has won it a couple of years ago. This year it's done particularly well in terms of its flowering ability. If they're, was a slight downside. We have had blazing hot weather this year, a serious drought, and in that heat, the flowers of, of my Boscobel, they really, they really haven't lasted too long, 
too long and that's um that was the only slight disappointment but many many flowers from boscobel for me this year but now we're going to talk about the rose that has come in third place and for me it is rose gabriel oak david austin rose and um this is its second full summer i'm hoping i can overlay some some footage where you get to see Gabriel Oak in flower. It's not in flower at the moment, but I'm hoping you'll get to see Gabriel in flower, but she has, this year, she has done fantastically well. I did say last year, I was a little disappointed with Gabriel Oak. She didn't flower for me that much, um, and she didn't grow that much, but this year she has just taken off. She really has, and she's given me three fantastic flushes. I've not noticed any sort of uh, degradation either in those flushes. They've been full. Gabriel Oak arose with a with a lovely a lovely fragrance, and I've been over the moon this year with the performance from Gabriel Oak. I really have fantastic rose. Um, I will talk very quickly. Oh, in fact, let's go to the second place rose now. Let's go to the second place rose, and I'm hoping again I have photographs or footage that I can overlay in this video. But in second place, I am going to give to Spicy Parfumer. Cordes Rose, part of the um, Parfumer collection. Part of the Parfumer collection, I don't know who that was. Someone just waved at me. And I'm putting this in second place, and I'm gonna tell you now, I am gutted that this rose hasn't, hasn't won. I really am. This is a rose, it starts to shine in probably April or May time when the new growth starts to come through. It's got that lovely red, glossy foliage growing in that sort of lovely hybrid T shape. And it looks a little, it looks a tiny bit like um, bonsai tree in terms of its growth. Now, I don't mean that literally, but when you look at spicy parfumer growing if you saw spicy parfumer growing in may of this year it stood out it stood out more than any other rose that i've got and that's because of its foliage now in terms of flowering it's given me three fantastic flushes the roses they last it's always got that um that fragrance whenever i put my nose to spicy parfumer it's got a lovely strong fragrance now i'm not someone who likes spice particularly I'm um, more of a chicken korma type guy. So when I saw the name Spicy Parfumer, I wasn't that taken aback with it. But for me, this year, Spicy Parfumer has, has done fantastically well. It's, a, it's another one of those roses like, oh, in fact, I'll name them, Emily Bronte, Brother Cadfall, um, Spicy Parfumer, Rosemary Harkness. These are the roses that have, um, that have grabbed me. They've got my attention. These are the roses that I look for in my in my garden, and I'm gutted that this rose it hasn't won. But the winning rose I'm going to tell you now is a David Austin rose, and <laughs> I really I really didn't want it to to win. I didn't want it to win because I think I think that um, everyone has this rose. I think it's a very common rose. Um, it's not a particularly fragrant rose, but David Austin he did. He did once say that um, it is quite possibly the the best rose that he that he has ever created, and in my garden, that seems to be true for for this year because it is a rose that has done fantastically, fantastically well, and it is of course Olivia Rose Austin. Here it is here, and I'm hoping I have footage of it. But it is a rose i planted this last year so it's only a little over a year old and it's got to be it's got to be well over four feet high probably approaching five feet high actually it is absolutely huge and it hasn't stopped flowering and the fact that i didn't want to um, give this rose my best performing rose i wanted to give it to spicy or i wanted to give it to gabriel oak it goes to show you how well this rose has performed in terms of best performing rose in my garden, I have to give it to Olivia Rose Austin. Here's another one here. Look at those flowers. Absolutely lovely flowers. 
it's just a shame that the fragrance in this rose they're um let me have another smell yeah just uh just it's, it has got a fragrance just a tiny fragrance and i that's another reason i wanted my rose this year to to be a fragrant rose but i cannot move it away from olivia rose austin this one here a year old this one here three years old now when i first planted this one this olivia rose austin it was that first year i had it it did need support um its flowers were a little droopy um and that worked against it and also that first year where it, where it was smaller there were fewer flowers fewer stems um i did say before that the sun it can bleach these flowers there were times in that first year i had it i looked at olivia and it was for intents and purposes it was a a white rose whereas this year where it's a much bigger you've always got new new roses coming through and you get this lovely sort of pink color i can't not give my best performing rose to anyone else other than olivia i mean look at all these buds that are coming through just buds everywhere how could i possibly award this to another rose this year and the fact that i'm not connected to it i'm really not it speaks volumes for this rose because this year this rose it gets my best performing rose on merit on merit alone believe me i'd love to give it to another rose very healthy i've said in previous videos you know this is the rose it's the benchmark of of health if you don't know anything about roses and you're looking to to plant something then you won't go wrong i don't think with olivia rose olivia rose austin look how upright it is i think that has done fantastically well but we are approaching the the half hour mark lovely viewer 27 minutes and um i do apologize that I've been trying to make this video for about the last two weeks, but the weather and work has, has worked against me. I'm hoping to God that I can, I can overlay, I can overlay some video so you do get to see the, the roses in flower. But lovely viewer, I hope you have a lovely day.